Hello everyone, welcome to the Bulldog Insider. Fresno State had a chance last night to get above 500 for the season. That didn't happen. Julia Lopez joins us now to show us how her alma mater, Colorado State, spoiled homecoming. Yeah, thanks Andrew. Well, coming into the game, Fresno State was a 14 point favorite. I even made a prediction that the Bulldogs were going to win 38-21, but as we saw, that didn't happen. So let's head out to Bulldog Stadium, an earlier game, a 4:30 kickoff. And as Andrew mentioned, it was homecoming for Fresno State, a time for alumni to come together and show their Valley pride and also help with the tunnel as the team ran out of it. The Colorado State Rams came up firing. It took 44 seconds into the game for the Rams to score first. And on their second play, Patrick O'Brien finds Trey McBride for a 60 nine yard touchdown and CSU gets on the board in less than a minute and goes up seven nothing not ideal on the Bulldogs first possession Jorge Reyna unable to hold on to the ball ball comes loose he recovers but he's also slow to get up take a look at that he's a little shaken up on that play the first couple of drives for Fresno State weren't too pretty they had a penalty in each of their first drives and couldn't really get anything going but hey this is going to be pretty cool. Number 46 on Colorado State is Adam Prentice, a Clovis High alum who was a walk on and earned himself a scholarship. He also wrestled with the Cougars in high school. He had a pretty good fan base at the game as well. The Rams on third and 10. O'Brien hooks up with Warren Jackson as Jackson tiptoes down the line and gets taken down at the one. Colorado State is going to punch it in a play later off the quarterback keep and takes a 14 0 lead in the first quarter. The Bulldogs trying to find a spark, and this is a good start on first and 10. Reyna to Ronnie Rivers off the screen, and that is good for a gain of 18. Cam Sutton started at tight end for the Dogs instead of Jared Rice, who has started the last 21 games at that position. On fourth and one, Reyna hit Sutton for 37 yards and is just short of the end zone. At first, I thought it was a touchdown, but on the very next play, former Clovis High star Josh Hokett takes it in off the direct snap, and Fresno State gets on the board 14 zip. At the end of the first quarter, they introduced their honorary captains, Lacey Barnes, who's a three-time All-American in track and field during the 80s, and also Ryan Matthews, who's the third leading rusher in Fresno State history and was a first-round NFL draft pick in 2010 by the then San Diego Chargers. I mean, this is some of the best times I've ever had, you know, uh, just being here and everything. It brings back a lot of memories, you know, with a lot of friends and a lot of teammates and stuff. And I seen Coach Hill, and that was, that was a real good highlight, too. So uh, this is awesome, man. I can't wait for the, to watch the game tonight. I'm just playing college football is it's different, a lot different from the NFL, you know. It's a whole different climate. But uh, I had fun, man. I really did. You know, and it, you know the accomplishments and everything, it, was just, it wasn't just me. It was the whole team and, and, uh, and everything. It was just fun, man. I liked it, I liked it a lot. And, you know, I kind of wish I was still playing. But other than that, uh, you know, I'm happy being retired. You know, I'm taking care of my son, and uh, I'm happy to be back here. All right, so the Rams were without their top running back in Marvin Kinsey, who led the conference in rushing. Head coach Mike Bobo said he's been suspended from the team, but enter Marcus McIlroy. He starts the second quarter with a nine-yard rushing touchdown to give the Rams a 21-7 lead. But the Dogs have a pretty good running back as well. His name is Ronnie Rivers, and he comes near side for the seven-yard score and pulls Fresno State within seven. The Bulldogs opened up the third quarter strong. Rivers takes the handoff here, fakes the camera, and is able to get 37 yards on that play and on second and nine Fresno State moving the chains Reyna is going to find Jamal Glasby for 10 yards and the first down dogs now inside the 10 so Reyna to Jalen Cropper who takes it outside take a look at this extends for the pylon but his foot was out of bounds but that's all right because two plays later Hokett gets his second touchdown off a direct snap and after the extra point the dogs tied up at 21 but one of Fresno State's offensive linemen is down Dante Bull gets hurt Andrew how does this affect the offense if he can't go next week you know Bull got hurt on that play then came back in then got hurt again he's their starting left tackle if he can't go Fresno State has a problem because Natani Muti's out for the season so they need some guys yeah Colorado State would retake the lead to go up 24 21 in the third but here's one of my favorite plays we know how Cropper is dangerous in the backfield off the reverse but he gets taken down inside the 10 on the very next play Rivers takes it in from seven yards out his second touchdown of the game and Fresno State gets it its first lead of the game 28 24 but in the fourth it didn't take long for the Rams to march down the field McIlroy oh this is Ronnie Rivers with a huge gain right there he gets loose, almost looks like he's taken it to the house, but they'd settle for three and it's tied at 31.
Colorado State on third and eight on the 14. O'Brien gets picked off by Juju Hughes in the end zone. An awesome play by the Hanford Bullpup. But Fresno State's next drive wasn't so awesome. Goes off the hands of Amorier Edwards and Logan Stewart comes down with it for the INT. That was brutal to watch in person. So that would eventually lead to this. O'Brien with the floater to Jackson for an 11-yard score as the Rams go up 38-31. Fresno State allowed 500 total yards for the first time since 2016 against Tulsa. CSU wins 41-31. Here are the numbers for the Dogs. Jorge Reyna was 20 of 37 for 200 yards. No touchdowns, two interceptions. Ronnie Rivers was the team's leading rusher and receiver. It was his best game of the season, 146 on the ground. But the penalties were huge. Fresno State had nine for 74 yards. Too many mistakes, um, penalties, they outplayed us. And uh, we didn't deserve to win the game. We got to learn from some of the mistakes and felt like we were penalized. You know, they took some big plays away from us and took us out of some put us behind the sticks quite a bit. And um, so we got to clean that up, gave up a lot of big plays. And uh, so got to go back and watch it and correct the mistakes and get back to work. Game brought to you by Sierra Pacific Orthopedics. Scott Beam is here alongside Cameron Worrell, the uh, sideline analyst for 940 ESPN Radio. And uh, Cam, you know, everybody's going to remember that interception, I think, late. You know, the ball that went off Amorier's hands, which led to the, uh, the game-winning points there for Colorado State. Yeah. But um, it felt to me like Fresno State was a little lucky to be in that position to begin with. It felt like Colorado State was the, the better team on this night. Yeah, I, I think they executed better. And you heard Jeff Tefford say it after the game. Fresno State made a lot of uncharacteristic mistakes. They had big penalties at times that took them out of scoring opportunities. You have a first and goal, you get a holding penalty, now it's first and goal from the 19-yard line. Things like that that just, like this team, as we spoke before, the margin for error for them is not great. When you make those type of mistakes, they just don't have enough firepower to overcome them. Colorado State all night long. Didn't make the big mistake, were able to sustain drives, and when they got in the red zone, they were able to score points, and we saw it down the stretch. That was the, that was the outcome. That was the difference of the game. Yeah, and just an awful start for the Dogs, yeah. which was kind of uncharacteristic because you figured, you know, second uh, home conference game there, uh, there would be some urgency um, from the Bulldogs. But on the, on the second offensive play from Colorado State, they get a, they get a, they go up top, get the 69-yard touchdown, and uh, they jump out to a 14-0 lead, which could have been 21 nothing very easily. Yeah. How surprised were you by that start? I was shocked. There was no sense of urgency. And, and I thought before, we, you and I spoke on the field before that UNLV game. It was the best energy that this team had pregame all season long, maybe since the USC game in the Coliseum, which just has its own energy. This team came out, I thought they had a good amount of energy, but they just didn't show up. There was no sense of urgency on those first, really, three drives for Fresno State. Luckily, Lavelle Bailey made a shoestring tackle uh, to, to keep Colorado State out of the end zone and, and force them to kick a field goal, and then Fresno State goes down and scores and kind of settled everything down. But this, this team has to have a sense of urgency every time they take the field against New Mexico State they didn't have it against Sac State they didn't have it and then once again uh, Saturday night they didn't have it against Colorado State and it cost them those 14 points that they spotted Colorado State they did not have enough in the tank to to, to overcome that yeah, and Colorado State, who has some, some offensive weapons, but they really moved it well uh, against the Bulldogs. Yeah. 500 total yards, like, like Julia mentioned. They, they ran it well. They, they threw it well. Um, this Bulldog defense, which has been opportunistic at times, but it's given up a lot of yards, and it hasn't been as good in the red zone as it was, I would say, the last two years. Why do you think they're struggling a little bit, and can it be fixed? Yeah, you know, I, I, they're not playing a physical brand of defense right now. One thing you can say or could say about the last two years of defense, yeah, they executed at a really high level, but they usually won the physical matchup. This defense has not won a physical matchup up to this point, even against UNLV, who they dominated and got a big victory against. They, UNLV pushed them around up front a little bit, so they have to figure out what they need to do to play a more physical brand of defense because – Going on the island, look, you're going to have to make open field tackles in space one-on-one, -on -one, which they struggled with Saturday night. Then you come home against Utah State, who has a lot of weapons and a quarterback who can sling it. And then San Diego State on the road, they're going to try to pound you for four quarters. So they have a lot of question marks right now. Can we tackle in space? Can we sustain, you know, 
our, our gap control defense at the line of scrimmage, and can we move guys backwards when we're tackling them? I have yet to see that consistently from this defense, and if they don't remedy that, this three-game stretch is going to be a really difficult three-game stretch to win the games they need to win to, to continue to stay in this Mountain West West Division race. I know it's it's looking pretty bleak right now at three <laughs> and four, but uh, let's focus on you know a few of the positives here. Uh, the first positive is even on the defensive side of the ball, they may have lost the physical battle. It felt like they won the physical battle offensively, that they ran the ball really well for the first time yeah. all year. That's a good sign, right, going forward? That's a very good sign. That's, I mean, that's been one of the keys. Can we sustain a running game with the running backs? We know Cropper can get it down. We know Jorge Reina has been effective, but can they hand it to Ronnie Rivers? Can they hand it to Josh Hoka and be effective, sustain drives, move the chains when you get in the red zone? Can you score with the run game? And they did that four times Saturday night, so that is a big positive. This offensive line still struggled at times in, in pass protection, but I thought they were better. I thought Jorge Reina regressed a little bit, but they ran the football. You continue to see young players making plays, which we talked about earlier this season. When you have young players, you're going to be inconsistent, and unfortunately they were just enough inconsistent Saturday night to, to lose that football game. Best part about young players is they continue to get older. Each, yeah, and they each continue and to get better and get better, better, right? better, right? Uh, all right, here's the other positive, all right? Somehow, some way, they still control their own destiny <laughs> right. in the West Division of the Mountain West yeah. at this point as they get ready to head to Hawaii. And I know we're into late October here. It feels like we're pretty far into the season, but we're still kind of near the beginning of the Mountain West part of the season. Yeah. And so the Dogs, yes, have two losses in conference, but only San Diego State has has a one, you know, one loss in the West Division. Everybody else has at least two losses, and Fresno State plays everybody on the schedule ahead of them starting with this week against Hawaii. So they could still win the conference. You're right. They can still win the West Division, get back to that Mountain West title game, and, and beat probably Boise, maybe Air Flight, whoever makes it out of the Mountain Division. Yes, they still have their destiny in front of them. They don't need somebody to knock somebody off for them to get back to that title game. It starts this week in Hawaii. This team can't think about that. We can talk about it. They can't think about it. They have a huge test going to the island against a very explosive offense. This defense, they're going to have to figure out how to communicate every single snap so you're on the same page. And then when you have a chance to make a tackle in space, you have to make a tackle in space. Make this Hawaii offense execute all the way down the football field. If you do that, Cole McDonald will throw some balls up, and this opportunistic defense can take advantage of that. But they have to tackle these Hawaii res receivers because they are very explosive weapons. Yeah, still feels like the West Division is kind of up in the air <laughs> at this point. So that, that's the silver lining if, the, if there is one. All right, that's Cam Worrell, always breaking things down here on the Bulldog Insider. Andrew, back to you. All right, thanks, guys. Let's take a look at the Mountain West standings. Starting in the Mountain Division, Boise State was idle this week, still undefeated in conference. Air Force with a dominant win over Utah State to move to 4-1 and one in conference. Wyoming won again to keep pace. Then it's the Aggies, Colorado State, and New Mexico. In the West Division, San Diego State had to sweat it out a bit last night, but held on to beat UNLV. And you notice the Aztecs are ranked now 25th in the AP poll. That gives the Mountain West two ranked teams. Hawaii is next after its two touchdown win in Albuquerque yesterday, followed by Fresno State, Nevada, San Jose State, and UNLV. 